Hey, Beth here from Amazonian Cosplay here to give you a whistle stop tour on the basics of goldwork embroidery. Goldwork is a classification of embroidery that's been around for hundreds if not thousands of years, there's even mention of it in the Bible. Whilst the most popular forms of goldwork do unsurprisingly involve gold, the name goldwork actually covers everything in embroidery that involves metal threads, wires, plates, even foiled leathers and fabrics. It has widespread use throughout history, especially with religious garments and such as Catholic priests ceremonial garb. A not so fun fact, with the national split from the Catholic Church when Henry VIII was in power in England, um, a lot of these historical garments from the Catholic Church that are covered in hundreds and hundreds of hours of hand embroidery uh, with gold work were destroyed and melted down for the monetary value of the metals used. And to this day, you can find gold work on modern ceremonial military outfits, for example, all around the world. And most recently, it was used immensely on the costumes in the new Netflix show Shadow and Bone. Um, it's on all of the uniforms and all of the embroidery on there is done with gold work. But enough on what gold work is, I'm no historian, and I'll link some resources in the description or if you are interested in learning more about the actual history of it. Um, I'm here to just show you the how. This video is by no means the be all and end all of gold work embroidery. It's such a vast technique with so many different materials and techniques available to you. Um, but my hope is that if you come to this crash course of a video with absolutely zero knowledge starting from scratch, that you will leave here with the tools to be able to go and do your own further research research and projects and create things. So in this video I am covering the mostly bullion wire based uh, gold work embroidery. So those are the most commonly used metal materials, it's what is used on those shadow and bone cautions I mentioned, and military uniforms it's what it mostly is if you look up close. And But there are lots of other materials too including metal wrapped threads, um, Japanese wire, metal sequins you can even get, the little punched holes of metal. Um, metal foil coated leather, just to name a few, um, but those are more advanced materials and to be honest I don't have enough experience with those um, in particular to feel comfortable giving instruction. So now I'm going to go over what the different sorts of wires are that you can use for gold work. So first we have Smooth Pearl, I've got some here that I bought in bulk for my Genya cosplay from Shadow and Bone um, and you can see that it is super super shiny and reflective. So smooth wire and all the balloon wires, it's basically tiny tiny little wires that have been wound around a shape and make a little hollow tube um, which you can put thread through and we'll be talking about how to use it later. So it creates these little metal wire tubes, um, almost like a spring but only about a millimetre wide in the, most commonly. So smooth pearl, uh, which is what this is, is the very very reflective pearl so it has more of a chrome metallic finish to it because um, it is these flat wires wound around a circle shape so it just gives this really immense shine reflection to it. But it is also very delicate and it does break more easily than any other um, type of gold work material. Next up we have rough pearl. So rough pearl is the same as smooth pearl in that it is the, the round shaped uh, hollow tubes but this time it's more of a matte metallic here so it's still very much metallic but it has a kind of rough texture to it so it doesn't have that chrome completely mirror finish like um, smooth pearl does but it's still very pretty still very metallic but um yeah you can you can get these in all sorts of different colors that's the thing it's not just gold colored wires um, you can get silvers and coppers but you can also get ones that have less commonly but you can get you know wires and plates and stuff that are multicolored um, and you can get some get anything you want really it just takes a bit of research on where to find it because it can be quite difficult to sort of look for these materials because they do have different names all around the world so while I'm calling these bullion wires all of what I will be using today um, in other countries they have different names so if you're in France it might be named Canateel um, and over in India they call it Dabka and there's all sorts of different names you know gold wires bullion wires pearls um, P-U-R-L, not pearl as in little round pearls. Um, yeah, so you do just have all these different names, so you do sometimes have to put a bit of research in and trying different terms in order to find what you are looking for. 
So next up we have my favourite type of gold wet wire which is bright check. So this differs in that instead of being wound around a circle shape like the smooth pearl and the rough pearl, this has been wound around a more sort of triangle shape and it gives these lovely little edges that mean it catches the light and gives a really really sparkly crunchy sort of look to it and it adds some really nice texture. So this is bright check, you can also get a dull check it's sometimes called, um, or, just, or just check it might be written as, and um, that is, um, it's so like with the difference between the smooth pearl and the rough pearl, it's sort of the shape of the wire that it is being wound around, so the bright check has those really sharp edges because it's more of a flat wire that's being wound around, um, so it makes it shinier, whereas a wound Whereas a round wire is used for the dull check and, and it gives a sort of smoother spiral shape to it. So I'll find a picture and put it on here. I don't have any for hand. But yeah, bright check is a really amazing one to use because it does just add this really nice bit of texture and breaks it up. And it's also quite forgiving as well with um, if things are a bit wonky or if you haven't been super neat with it, as I definitely am not, because um, I'm, I'm lazy and I like to rush things. So bright check's a great one to use um, if you are a bit of a beginner as well because it does sort of hide a lot of mistakes with that texture. Next up, we have Pearl Pearl. So that's Pearl as in P-E-A-R-L, like the C pearls, and then Pearl as in the wound up wires, P-U-R-L. And the reason why it has this name is, as you can see, it almost looks like a little string of pearls, just very, very, very tiny. Um, it has this sort of really rounded wire to it and it gives this bubbly effect. And you can stretch it out and make it longer. So Pearl Pearl tends to be a lot stiffer than um, the other bullion wires, it's not as flexible and it's much more commonly used for outlining. Um, so you would you know, do the normal shapes with smooth pearl or the rough pearl, blah blah blah, and then you would outline it in the pearl pearl because it's super stiff, it does get those really nice corners, it does get really smooth lines, it's just a bit more difficult to work with because it is stiff. And then finally we have broad plate. So this is a newish material to me and I really love it. It gives a super gorgeous shiny finish to it. It is worked in a very different way to the wires. So it obviously isn't a tube. It's not something that you can sew through the middle of um, and it doesn't have the little loops to catch thread in, which well, I'll be showing you how to do later with the others. Um, so this is worked in a completely different way. But I have included it in this video because even though it's not a wire, it's not a pearl, um, it is a quite commonly used gold work material. Um, you might recognise it if you're at all familiar with Claire's wedding dress in the TV show Outlander, which is a dream costume of mine to make. Um, so all of her embroidery up close you'll see is um, done with broad plate and it gives this beautiful metallic, like reflective finish to it. Um, there isn't really anything else that can give that sort of effect because um, it is just basically, yeah, a sheet of metal. Uh, and it's a really beautiful effect and we will be doing some more with that later. So those are all the different types of goldwork wires and materials that I will be using in this video today. These are a bit more sort of beginner materials or the most maybe not beginner but there because it's definitely an advanced technique gold work as a whole and um, if you are you know brand new to embroidery and you've never done any embroidery at all before I wouldn't recommend jumping straight into gold work because it does definitely require some sort of skill with a needle and thread and different stitch types and stuff um, to sort of know what you're doing but um, yeah I mean it is definitely an advanced technique um, but it adds such beautiful texture and shine and a sort of opulence to um, designs or costumes, you know, which is what I mainly use my embroidery for. Um, so yeah, those are all the materials that I am covering today. So next we need to get started with it. So before you can actually do your gold work embroidery, you do need to prep whatever it is you are working on. So I've got some cotton in a hoop here and I've made sure it's very, very, very taut. Um, a lot of times when I see people who are newer to embroidery and they struggle with it and getting things neat, I notice that they haven't fully pulled the fabric taut because those sort of basics maybe aren't properly explained because there are all the instruction videos that there are really kind of expect you have some very basic knowledge and I found you know people don't even know how to put fabric into a hoop that sort of thing. I will be making a video um, in the near future all about some embroidery basics especially embroidery for costumes um, and how to do embroidery for costumes. 
um, and do appliques and that sort of thing. So that'll be covered in a future video. But yeah, so I've got this cotton and I pulled it super, super taut. And next we've got to do our padding. So you can do the gold work wires directly onto the fabric, but it won't look too nice. And there's, there's two reasons why we don't want to do that. So one, especially if you're going to be using it on a costume piece, it will damage the fabric. These are wires, this is metal. The edges where you cut are going to be quite sharp. And if you are doing it straight onto the fabric, there is a possibility that they will cut into the threads, cut into the fibers, and then things will snap off. But also because they have these quite thick ends, they will be sort of lifted up at the side, you know? So really wanted to kind of curve down and hide those edges so that things don't get caught in it. So it has a nice round shape to it. And it doesn't have to be dramatic, just a little bit. So now we've got to do some padding. So to, for the base of it. So this is going to be the base of our gold work embroidery. So I'm going to be covering two different types of padding for your gold work. I'm going to be covering flat felt padding and I'm going to be covering string padding. So flat felt padding, there are a few different ways of doing it. I'm going the lazy route here. I've just got some normal craft felt, um, just, you know, standard one millimeter thick felt that you can find at any hobby store, fabric store. And you want to make sure that the felt matches the wires and metals that you're going to be putting on top of it. Because chances are there's going to be teeny tiny little gaps between the wires and you don't want some bright yellow felt showing through when you're using black um, wires because it would just show your mistakes a lot more and we want to hide our mistakes. So you can also get other thicknesses of felt. So for my Genio from Shadow and Bone, I'm using four millimeter thick felt and that is because I'm lazy basically. Um, so when you are doing felt padding, normally what people do if they want a slightly higher, thicker texture, um, they want a slightly higher, thicker shape to it, they will layer up felt onto their fabric and starting with a small bit and then building up to a big bit. I've been using the four millimeter felt because I'm lazy and it means I only have to sew the backing down ones. So that is an option, but it's obviously not going to be as clean as doing it the proper way by sewing multiple layers of felt. But I'm just gonna show you how to do one layer. So I've literally just cut out some felt with some little scissors into the shape of what I want my gold work piece to be. You want to make sure that your padding is ever so slightly smaller than the shape you want because the wires are thick and they are going to build that shape up bigger because you do need to hide that felt. So they are gonna come over the edges. So you want to make sure that your padding is ever so slightly minuscule amount smaller than the shape of the piece that you want to have as your final piece. So it's not anything too difficult. All we're doing is just using some thread, just like this is just standard machine thread, and we're just tacking it down all the way around, making sure there's no large edges sticking up, making sure that we're going into the corner. It doesn't need to be super, super strong because we are gonna have a lot of stitching going over and under it as well with the wires and when we are sewing those down. But you do wanna make sure that you are being neat and making things even because your gold work's only gonna look as nice as your padding is underneath. So don't try and rush it. I did rush it a bit with this. As you can see, I made mistakes um, as I was doing this because I was rushing it for the camera. Um, so yeah, but you wanna just take your time with it. But if it is a little bit messy, it's not gonna matter too much because it mostly is gonna be hidden. Just the main thing is you wanna make sure that the thickness is the same all the way around. You know, so you don't wanna have one edge that's really, really, really thin and brought down to the fabric on one side, and then the other side is sticking up massively because then your gold work will be lopsided. If you do struggle with your thread tangling, um, like I do here in the footage, um, what you can do is get some beeswax. So this is just a standard old block. You can get beeswax that's specially for sewing needles and stuff, um, sewing threads from your local haberdashery and it'll come in a little plastic thing, but you don't need it. Like any old beeswax will do. It's get a block of it, run your thread through it and it will hold the fibers in a bit better and mean that things tangle less. Um, this is very much recommended when you are using the thread with the gold work wires because the thread fibers can obviously very easily catch on the metal wires, but you don't need it, it's just if you're finding it a bit difficult and it will make your life easier, but if you can't find any and you don't have any, it's not the end of the world. You can still 
you can still do your gold work without having some beeswax very easily. So that's really the felt padding, nice and easy, you're just, shut, you're just sewing a shape down onto some fabric. It's not really difficult. The second type of padding that I'm going to be showing you is string padding. So this is a very traditional method and it's how you would get all of the really raised sort of snake-like filigree shapes to it. This is a more advanced technique, um, but it actually isn't as difficult as it might look. So it just looks a bit fancy. Um, you can get proper string that is designed and sold to be used with gold work. So generally it comes in a sort of yellow or you can get a gray. And I'm cheap, I'm, I'm very cheap. So I don't wanna buy string that's specifically for that when I have some left over from when I was making Christmas baubles. So this is literally just like one millimeter thick um, twine that I bought off eBay and you can get it in so many different colors. Um, so yeah, I've literally just been using this cheap ash twine <laughs> and it doesn't really matter. You can wax this as well with the beeswax but I've, um, to, make you, to make it stick together but I've found that um, I haven't really needed to. Um, if you are struggling uh, when doing the string padding, try running it through the wax and it might make your life a little bit easier. So string padding, it might look a bit overwhelming but I'm going to explain to you very easily how you do it. So basically, you want to get a sort of group of the string a, a sort of cut a bit longer than the piece that you want to, to sew down the shape that you want to do so just group that together i don't didn't really count the sort of however much makes the sort of tube thickness that you want your piece to be at its thickest point so you lump that all together and this is where if you have wax the string it can help because it will kind of stick it together and make your life a little bit easier but yeah not super necessary and what you're going to do is you're going to sew around it so you're sewing that down as a whole so as a creating a big lump tube like a like a bit of piping or cord or something if you're sewing that down and so you are cushing it down um which is the word for yeah sewing over so you basically start in the middle you want to make sure that you are starting in the middle of your curved shape because that's where the thickest bit is going to be and also it helps you keep a more uniform shape if you start in the middle, work down, because if you start at one end, your angles might go off a bit, and it also wouldn't really work for this. So start in the middle, go over, make sure it's super secure. Now what you're going to do, in order to make it get thinner, as you go along, every couple of sort of stitches, you're gonna lift up all of the string, and the ones that are underneath that are hidden, you're gonna snip off, and it's gonna make a new thickness. And they're gonna be hidden, the bits that have been cut off are going to be hidden underneath the string that you are still using and as you stitch over you're doing these really tight stitches with doubled over thread um, and it will really hold it all in place and create this sort of loopy shape to it and yeah so you just keep going and when you've got reached a bit you want you will lift them up snip underneath and then continue going holding those under until you get to the very very end where you would just be left with one string and you can make a really really small nice pointy end so not only has the width of it gone down the height of it's also gone down so it makes a really nice smooth finish and then you'll go and do the other end as well and this is quite a time consuming process but, but with this sort of shape it's really really important that you do take your time because it really will make a difference once the wires are on top because yeah the wires are just going to sit on top and of that and whatever shape you've got underneath is how they're going to look so if it is lumpy if the shape is off the gold book wires are going to reflect that on top so once you have done your choice of padding you are ready to stitch your wires so onto the felt padding, I'm going to be using a lovely red smooth pearl and I'm just doing very basic, some diagonal lines at a 45 degree angle. So just like with the string padding, you want to start doing these wires in the middle of the shape because you're setting the angle of what you want to be your angle for the whole thing and you're gonna work down from there. Because if you start at one end, you're just gonna lose the angle, it's gonna end up curving, it's gonna end up going out of shape and it's not gonna look super neat. It's gonna just go a bit off. So start in the middle. What you're gonna do, you're gonna start at one side and you're gonna bring up your needle through the fabric and you are gonna thread a cut off piece of wire onto the needle like a bead. So they are these hollow tubes and you're gonna thread it on and then just before you stitch it down, as it is your first one, test out the length of it. Sort of hold it down once it's got to the bottom of the thread. 
hold it down onto the felt or test it out at the angle and if you're happy with it then you can sew it down if you're not happy with it bring it back up to the top of the needle snip a little bit off or cut if it's too short get a new piece and then you can stitch it down one of the most important things to do before you start stitching with your bullion wire is you want to stretch it out just a tiny little bit. Not enough so that it actually, you know, really breaks, just an ever so slight soft pull just to separate the bits of the wire ever so slightly. Now, not only is this so if you do have to do any couching, um, the thread can, can fit between it, but also it will help it go to the shapes that you're wanting much much easier and it will make things look a lot neater because if it's just left at that original sort of springiness where it's completely compact together there's no wiggle room if say your piece is a bit too long it will just sort of bend upwards and there'll be a gap whereas if you've ever so slightly stretched it out it will kind of squeeze itself back into being the right shape if you have cut pieces a little bit too long so this is great if you are a beginner as well because you do have a bit more leeway with that so just make sure that you do stretch things out a little bit so one thing as well that can be super helpful and save you some time is once you've got the piece cut to the length that it want, you want it to be, before you sew it down, measure it out on the wire and cut some more because you do not want to have to measure every single time because that's just going to waste a lot of your time. So just, yeah, don't sew it down for straight away. Cut some more. Save yourself the time of measuring. And yeah, that's pretty much it. You're just going to go along in that angle, coming up, threading on the bit of wire, sewing it down and just being really careful not to get your threads tangled. So there is a device you can use called a melor and it's like a kind of flat metal stick thing and you can use it to sort of hold the threads down, hold the wires down, push things around because our fingers are obviously a lot bigger than um, the wires but I don't have one, I just use my fingers or you can use a pair of tweezers, that sort of thing. <laughs> it just can be a little bit fiddly um, especially if you don't have super good eyesight up close. And you're just gonna keep going down, making sure that you keep that angle going, um, ideally a 45 degree angle. Now, when you're doing it, you want the wires to be ever so slightly longer than the sides of the felt. Because that felt is raised up off the fabric, you want that wire to curve around it and give a nice smooth finish. You don't want it to be flat on top because then you'll have the edges of the felt showing, you'll have the stitching showing. You want it to curve around. So make it ever, ever so slightly larger and do your stitching about half a millimeter away from the edge of the felt and that will account for the thickness of the wires and it will curve it around the shape and then once we get to the little corners I'm just gonna get some smaller pieces of wire cut just to sort of gradually make it into a little point and there we go that's what it will be looking like that is your smooth pearl on top of some felt padding and just a standard non raised and um, non curvy shape Next we're moving on to the string padding. So this is where it gets a little bit more difficult. So this time I'm gonna be using two different wires. I'm gonna be using the rough pearl, which is the matte metallic, and I'm using a lovely petroly blue color. And I'm also going to be using the antique gold bright check wire. Now the reason for this is not only because I like it, I'm alternating the colors, but having that bright check wire there does give me a little bit of leeway for things to be a little bit messy and mistakes won't be noticed as much because of that thick texture of it and also because it will break up the lines between the bits of wire and so if the angles of the rough pearl because that is thinner and smoother it's harder to you know control um, and look as neat it will sort of hide if the angles are a little bit off which especially can help when you are doing a really curved piece like this because of course getting the angles perfect around these curves is going to be very very hard so just like with the felt padding we are starting from the middle of the piece now because this is a very much a raised piece this is raised off the fabric just under a centimeter so it is a very raised 3d piece to it so you want to be extra careful with your measuring so you want it to curve all the way around and be touching the bottom of the fabric you don't want to have any of that string padding showing and this is why again it's really good if you have stretched out your wire just ever so slightly it's a very soft pull because then it can help spring back into that shape and curve around the really raised shapes a lot easier so what i'm doing for this i'm doing two lines of the rough pearl and then one line of the bright check and i'm just very slowly gradually going around this raised shape and because as it is raised it is a lot longer than each individual piece is a lot longer than it would be on the flat one because it has such a big curve to get round 
and then I'm just very very gradually fanning it around that curve at the bottom of the snake sort of shape um, just to sort of make it a bit smoother rather than staying the line like that it makes it a bit more natural looking and it makes it nice and smooth and pretty just sort of very gradually fan it around and that's where as well having the string underneath um, matching your wires can really help because if there are these little gaps which there will be as you're doing the fanning shape because obviously one side's going to be tighter and one side's going to be more spread apart so you can get that curve it really does help if the string matches the colour of the wires I've just chosen to use string and threads that don't match so you can see what I'm doing and then as we get to the bottom of it I'm getting these teeny teeny tiny little bits and the final piece I'm just going to make go ever so slightly away from it and over just so it does hide all evidence of the string and then when we're done we have a lovely raised his traditionally historical though maybe not with the colors um raised gold work piece So now we're going to do some couching. Couching, couching, I'm not too sure. I know it's a French word, so couching is probably the correct pronunciation of it. So couching is when instead of sewing through the wires, um, like we have been doing so far, we've been sewing through the hollow center of the wires. Instead, this time we're going over the wires and the thread will be caught in between the little loops and hold it down. So for this, we're going to be using that pearl pearl. And that's the one where it's slightly more rounded and it's stiffer and it has these little lumpy beaded almost texture. So this is great for outlines. This is what it mainly is used for. So the pieces that we've just done, you could outline it with pearl pearl um, and it would give a lovely sort of outline texture to it, which makes it look a lot neater as well because it'll get a nice smooth finish around the edge. So pretty simple it just can be a little bit fiddly to do this so what I'm doing is I'm going to come up with a single strand of thread you don't want more than a single strand because it will just show and it will get caught on it all sorts um, this is where it can really really help to have that wax thread because you are going around it and because this is so fiddly threads are more likely to get caught as you're doing this so I'm coming up and over and if you have stretched out your wire a little bit um, the thread will go through it so it will be holding it onto the fabric in an almost invisible way because that thread will be sitting between the loops of the wire rather than going on top of it now if you do want to you can do decorative couching where you know you could use colored threads that sort of thing and or thicker embroidery threads possibly and you could go over the top of it in sort of equal lines say you know maybe like a couple of millimeters and then another couple of millimeters and have these little colored lines over the top and that definitely is a well-used technique um which can be quite fun add some different sort of variation in color and texture to your design but for this we're just using machine thread and we want it to be holding it on there invisibly so straight line nice and easy going over the top and it can really help when you reach the end of a line to bring up your needle just over the end of it and then push your needle through the center of that hollow there just like up to the next couple of loops and then it will just hold the end down from sticking up and the same goes for when you're trying to do a curved line again it's just a little bit more fiddly it can help with the pearl pearl because it is so stiff to shape it a little bit into the shape you want it to be um, say you have a sharp corner you want you can bend that V shape into it and hold it down there and it's just the exact same way just sewing over the top catching that thread in the wire and holding it down there and then you would never know that it has been sewn down because you can't see the stitching so next up we're going to be doing broad play which is completely different to any of the techniques we've seen so far I'm going to be doing it on top of some felt padding um, just because it's a bit nicer when it's over the top it's got slight curve to it so broad plate rather than you um, sewing through because you can't sew through it's plate you're going to be doing a kind of zigzaggy going over the top of it um, so it's this lovely plate metal and like I said you can see it in Claire's wedding dress uh, from Outlander and it's a lovely material so what we're going to do we're going to bring the needle up and down again just at the start of where we want it to be just over the edge and we're gonna make a tiny little loop. We're not gonna pull it all the way through. We're just gonna wait until it's almost gone all the way through. And then we're gonna take our broad plate and we're gonna, just using our finger and thumb, just gonna bend it into a little hook shape. And what we're gonna do with that, we're gonna hook 
that metal hook onto the thread that we have left there and then when we pull that thread down it's going to hold the broad plate in place so you don't have a flat bit of metal that can slip out because it is hooked underneath and then just really you can sort of press that back into the fabric just to sort of bend it into shape. Now until you have got a couple of rows down that might want to come out so this is very fiddly this is where having a melor can really help and um, because if you do handle the broad plate too much of your hands it is going to leave little fingerprints on it and could tarnish as it is this flat metallic um, mirror finish metal. So then onto the other side you're going to come up you're going to sew over it like you're doing Cushing you're just going to sew over it just quite tight to it and then once you've sewn over it, pulled that tight, you're just going to bend the metal. You're going to flatten it over, bend the metal, and you're not going to do it straight on. You're going to do it at a slight angle so that it can come up. So it will just be overlapping the last line that you did, and it will go over in a sort of zigzaggy pattern. And then you'll do the same from the other side, and you'll just keep going back and forth. If you do find that it is the thread is slipping a bit and not holding it as tight as you need it to be to sort of get the shape you want, don't be afraid to do a couple of little holding stitches into the felt just to sort of hold that tight while you do the bending and the stitching of the next bit. And then you'll get into a little rhythm of it and it's a really really lovely technique it's quite fun to do once you've got the hang of it it's just a bit fiddly to start off with but the result it gives is this lovely metallic shiny finish. So what you're going to do when you get to the end that final row you're going to cut off we need to sort of measure out the sort of amount that you need and add a few millimeters on you're going to bend that hook shape around then you're going to bring your thread up sort of snake the thread around that hook this is going to be a bit fiddly and um, some tweezers could really help you to hold the, the plate in place because the thread might slip out a couple of times as you are sort of having to get it around and under in such a tiny little space and it can be quite difficult so yeah you're just going to get that thread through bring that thread back down I would hold down that final strip with your finger just to make your life a little bit easier and then pull that down straight um, now I would do a couple of holding stitches as well elsewhere on the fabric if you if it is just a um, piece it's part of or if there's anywhere else you can hide a stitch in that would be really good to sort of hold that in place and then there you go that is your broad, broad plate piece um, you could be a little bit neater than I was, um, but yeah, definitely it is a really fun technique to do. And then finally, we're going to be using our bright check wire again, and this time we're going to be doing some chipping. So chipping is just a way of doing cut work, um, like we did before, and where you cut pieces of the wire off, sew through it, through the hollow centre, and then sew it down. But this time, we're going to be cutting it into teeny tiny little pieces, only a couple of millimetres long and sewing them down in a random shape uh, like a bead, like you're filling a space with beads. And that's basically what we're doing. It's basically beading, but just a little bit more fiddly as you're using wire. And yeah, I really like using this technique. Um, it's not something that I use too much. It doesn't really work with the design stuff that I've done so far, but it does give a lovely sort of really textured, sparkly, um, encrusted look to it, like little jewels, especially if you're mixing into other little colors because it is so reflective, it would give a really nice effect. And that is it for our crash course in gold work embroidery. I hope it's been somewhat helpful to you and gold work is somehow, hopefully, a little bit less overwhelming or intimidating for you. Um, I found in my research over the past few years that it is a really inaccessible um, technique and skill to learn. So much of the research and resources and instruction and even where to buy materials and what sort of materials you need are held behind really expensive paywalls you know so there are some incredible incredible um, courses physical courses at like London Embroidery School or Hand and Lock or the Royal School of Needlework and they are incredible courses and I would love the chance to go on a six-week embroidery course there at some point in my life but I am aware that that's not accessible for most people whether monetarily because they are very very expensive or you live on the other side of the world you know there's not that much 
there aren't that many free resources basically and it's very inaccessible and the free resources that there are kind of assume that you already know the basics of what the different materials are and how to do that sort of thing so yeah the aim with this video was to make things a little bit more accessible and make gold work possible as a skill for more people um, because it is such a lovely skill and not enough people know what it is know about it or know how to do it so hopefully I have helped a little bit um, of course all the supplies that I've used um, as well as some useful resources and learning and other people talking about it who are you know much more experts on <laughs> gold work embroidery than I am um, I have linked down in the description below if like the majority of people watching I suspect you are interested in doing gold work for cosplay or costume um, embroidery then hit that subscribe button because my next video it, tutorial is going to be um, all about how to do cosplay slash costume uh, appliques with hand embroidery I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you do wish to see more of my work I have two places for it. You can follow my normal Instagram which is at AmazoniaCos. Um, I post all of my cosplay work on there, everything, so not just sewing based. Um, I do armour and leather work and metal work and cool stuff. Um, and if you are interested in seeing just my embroidery work, which I've got lots of close-ups and details, um, I have my other Instagram at Amazon Embroidery, which is just all of my embroidery work. As always, feel free to drop me a message on Instagram if you have any questions um, or want to have a commission, anything, if you just want to have a chat about embroidery, come my way and um, let's have a chat about it. And yeah, just drop me a message. And anyway, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and leave a like if you liked it. Happy crafting!